okay? Um, people choose not to get saved. Or they, they, they get close, but they, they don't go ahead and accept. And why is that? There's a few reasons. There's three reasons I want to give you today. One is conventional thinking, okay? When we start thinking uh, the way that people think now, if you've ever gone on to uh, one of the social networks or and gone to, say, CNN News or Fox News or any of the news channels, and you read some certain article that may have to do with Christianity, and then you read on down into the comments, it's really disheartening for the fact that what so many people, I mean, it really hurts me to hear people laugh and make a mockery of that there's no God, you know, that's all a joke, uh, it's not real. People are prone to believe now that the Bible is simply a fable. It's a great myth, mythical story, but none of it's true. And they don't understand God's reasonings of why he does things. Oh yeah, if there's a God, then why does he let a tornado happen and tear a town up and people get killed? Or a child gets sick or a child passes away and people don't understand that. But instead of understanding what God says about the trials and tribulations even a child of his is going to go through is a, a testing of our faith. It's easier just to say, oh, because God doesn't do that, we just don't understand him, and therefore the Bible's not real. He's a fake. The Bible's a fake. And, and it comes down to God's existence doesn't rely on our limited understanding. Okay, just because we don't understand God and how he works doesn't prove he doesn't exist. Can you understand what I'm saying? Jesus, and, uh, Jesus talked about people that have this conventional type philosophy of thinking. Uh, in, chap in Mark chapter 4 verses 11 to 12 he said unto them, to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. So putting that into perspective, conventional thinking is, limit, is limited to our human understanding, whereas the knowledge of God is boundless. He already knows everything. Let me give you a quick example. Okay, a long time ago, everybody thought the world was flat. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that got proven wrong. Okay? Uh, remember, a lot of us is growing up, your mom or daddy say, don't pop your knuckles. It's going to give you arthritis. Well, doctors today will tell you that's not true. That's air escaping from the joints, and it's not going to give you arthritis. Or a classic one, don't sit too close to the TV. You're going to end up wearing glasses. Well, a lot of people wear glasses that never sat close to the TV. I now being one of them. It's, this year is the first time I've ever had to wear glasses in my life, but I wasn't allowed to sit close to the TV because it ruined my eyes, so therefore that didn't have anything to do with it. But that's just another one of those old wives' tales that we've learned to follow. But as we've gained in knowledge, we've learned that those things are exactly that. They're myths and fables. Where, see, God's not. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Nothing of that changes. He already knows everything. We increase in knowledge in ourselves. But God doesn't need to increase because he already knows everything. The second thing that we almost get saved, but not quite, is personal ambition. Ambition is a wonderful thing. You know, you don't want to ask somebody, you know, what's your ambition like? Oh, I don't know, I'm just going to hang out here and see what happens. Well, that's, that's not quite what I'm talking about. What I, what I want to get at is when your ambition, I mean, it's good to have an ambition. You want to have a plan in your life of where you're going, what you're going to do. But what you don't want is that plan to interfere with what God has in store for you. And a lot of you today, 
many of you, especially the unsaved, and even sometimes the saved, think that you're doing fine without God. You don't need God in your life. Look, just, just look how well you're doing. And John warns us in uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the things that feel good, the lust of the eyes, things you desire, and the pride of life, recognition that we crave, is not of the Father, but is of this world. And the world is passing away. See, society, in society's eyes, you might be doing great. You might, man, oh, John over there, he's doing great, man. He's six-figure income, beautiful house, paid for, no mortgage, cars. Everything's going great. All of that can be lost in the blink of an eye. You never know what could happen in your life. Although society sees you doing great, and you think you're doing great, without God, it's not going to turn out that way. That, I can promise you. You could lose your job. Then what would happen? Your marriage could fall apart. Be having troubles with your, with your spouse. Children, your children could get into some kind of legal trouble. Worst case scenario, your health falls apart. And then all of a sudden, all that would be gone instantly. You understand what I'm saying? And a relationship with God will never change. And here again, I say because God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. Don't put off a salvation and knowing your eternity just because you're not ready for it. And the third reason I want to give you, and you ought to know I'm going to be saying this somewhere, is worldly pleasures. You see, we've all been there. I know I have. I, I, I've been, especially back in my younger days. I did a lot of things that were displeasing to God, and I'm sure many of you do. And if you're a saved child of God and you're doing things that are displeasing God, I urge you to get back in the fellowship with Him. Turn from these things you're doing. Bring them to God. And he'll help you. He'll help you get back on the narrow path and to start living again for Him and restoring the joy of your salvation. If you're not a child of God and not saved, then you have a bigger issue to worry about. And that's the fact of hell. Which is, again, like I tell you, it is a reality. But many of you say, well, Rick, you know, right now I just don't want to, I don't want to give up this lifestyle that I'm living. I, I kind of got this party, maybe I'll do it next week, I got this party I'm going to, you see, and, and there's this person there that, and, uh, and there might be some drinking, and you know, I just can't, I can't give myself to God right now because I can't change all that because I want to make sure I get to this party and I want to meet this person. And well, you know the old saying, Rick, sex, drugs, rock and roll, yeah. We've all been there, and I understand that, especially young people. I'm especially talking to you. What happens if you're on the way home in a car? Somebody drunk runs into you, takes your life, and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior. It's too late. There's not an excuse. It's painful. It hurts. I understand this. That's why it's of the utmost importance to give your life to God. It's that simple, okay? The way you live now can lead to heartache, it can lead to pain, it can lead to destroying your whole life. It's much easier to give your life to God now than to wait.
God gives us a warning about people who do live this lifestyle. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is, uh, we can find in uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 52. Uh, listen as I read that. Now as it happened that they journeyed on the road, that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You understand, when Jesus wants you to do something, he wants you to do it now. There's no need to put off because we don't know if we're going to take the next breath. We just don't know. But you know what? Here's the good part of all of it. God will accept you just as you are. You could be the biggest hellion that walked the face of the earth. You could be addicted so much to drugs that you don't, you have to steal for your addiction. You drink so much, you don't remember the last time you were sober. You could have been, you could steal things. I, I, you could have murdered people. It doesn't matter. Remember, Jesus died on the cross for you, for all your sins. Past, present, and future. You bring your life to Jesus now, all those things will be forgotten. And, and you'll be regenerated. You'll be a new person in Christ. The Holy Spirit will now reside within you. And you will allow Him to beat the addiction. You understand? You can't do it on your own. You never could. But with the Holy Spirit, He's going to help you do it. And it may not be instant. It may take a little time. But the fact of the matter is, is once you believe on Jesus, you become a child of God. And everything else will fall into place. He'll take you. He'll get you where you need to go. You just follow. Do what He says and follow. Listen, it doesn't matter what denomination you are. The plan of salvation is very simple. Simply believe. There's nothing added to it. There's nothing taken away from it. You simply believe. Jesus said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Didn't say stop being a drunkard and believe and you'll be saved. He didn't say stop being an adulterer and believe and you'll be saved. He simply said believe. I don't care what condition you are in today. And listen, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come unto the Father except by me. There is no other name but the name of Jesus which you can call on to save you. Your denomination, I don't care what your denomination is. I don't care if you're Catholic, doing a million Hail Marys isn't going to save you. I don't care what anybody tells you. There is but one way to salvation. That's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Admit the fact that you're a sinner. Believe that he died on the Christ for you. Let him know. Just tell him, Lord, I'm a sinner. But I know you died on the cross for me. And I'm trusting in your word that... All I have to do is believe, and I'll become a child of yours. Then the sanctification will take place, and you'll notice the change, and you'll want to live for Jesus. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to ask you, how long are you going to stay in the state of almost? Could this video end right now, and you walk outside, and somebody shoots you? Did you get in your car? be in an accident, and 
die in the accident, you're not going to have time to say, oh, I've got plenty of time. You don't. So why not do it now? Give God the opportunity to save you. Jesus says in John 3.3, 3, you must be born again. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 tells us there is no other name by which we are saved. John 5.13 tells us we can know that we have eternal life. You can know it. Believe what I'm saying. Believe in Jesus and thou shalt have eternal life. And unfortunately there's going to be many of you that are going to look at this video and say, oh, I've heard all that before, I just don't believe it, i still got time. Some are you going to say that famous word, whatever. You know, the decision is yours. Some of you even are going to listen but choose not to come to him. <coughs> but know from this moment forward, if you say, Jesus, I do believe, I do believe, then you can know without a doubt that you have eternal life. What's your decision going to be? It's that easy. If you want to make that commitment, just bow your head, tell Jesus you come into your life, and you believe that he died on the cross for you. You believe that he's going to take all your sins away and forget about them as he promised he would. It's that simple. You don't have to go to a mass. You don't have to go talk to a priest. Jesus says you talk to him one-on-one. -on -one. It's that easy. That's all you have to do. And it's the only thing you can do. Please make that decision now, today, so that you can know from this moment forward, should anything happen, your eternity is secured in heaven. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring us. Father, I ask that if anybody out there listening today is almost persuaded that now is the time that they come to you. Father, I ask these things in your precious name. Amen.